This is Math 99 section 8.8 .8, and we are um, working on applications with rational expressions. And so two, th two things to keep in mind while we're doing this is distance equals rate times time or dirt and also uh, work equals rate times time or wart and then every um, kind of modification on that that you can do. So those are good things to use for these pro types of problems. Um, an airplane can fly 200 miles into a 300 mile per hour headwind in the same amount of time it takes to fly 300 miles with a 30 mile per hour tailwind. About 300 miles. What's the speed of the airplane? So we're going to assume the speed is constant. And that's the rate. So we've got distance, we've got rate, and we've got time. So we're going to say the rate's always the same. Uh, R is the rate of the Let's say that uh, the speed of the plane, let's just call it S for speed of the plane. And we have two things. We have um, into the headwind, and then we have with the tailwind. So uh, it's 200 miles into the headwind. Right now I'm just, I'm just gathering up information. 300 miles uh, with the tailwind. Same amount of time. So let's just call these both T. Uh, actually, let's not do that yet. Uh, let's think about the rate. If the rate of the plane is S, when it is going into a headwind, it's being slowed down by that headwind. In other words, its speed is, is, is 30 miles per hour less than it usually is. So the rate is going to be S minus 30. And if it has a tailwind, that's going to speed it up. That's going to that's going to push it along. And that's a 30 mile per hour tailwind. So that rate would be S plus 30. So here is where it gets kind of uh, convenient for us. Notice I at first I was like, oh, I'll use T for time, but I decided not to because it says the same amount of time. So the headwind time and the tailwind time are equal to each other. I If I could um, express those in terms of the distance and the rate, I'd be in good shape. So distance equals rate times time. That means that uh, divide both sides by rate, distance divided by rate equals time. So the time for the headwind is the distance divided by the rate. It's, it's 200 divided by S minus 30. And then for the tailwind, it's distance divided by rate, 300 divided by S plus 30. Now it says that those times are equal to each other. So I have an equation that will be uh, the headwind time is equal to the tailwind time. And so now notice what I have is a, a problem that I can solve using the techniques from last unit, um, from last chapter, where I can multiply both sides by this, uh, this denominator s plus 30 times s minus 30. So if I do that, here it cancels out, here it cancels out, 200 gets distributed into there, so that's 200 s plus 30 times 200 is 6,000. 300 gets distributed into there. 300s minus 300 times 30 is a... Uh, subtract 200s from both sides. Add 9,000 to both sides. Divide by 100. And the speed is 150. Okay, so I'm going to focus on setting up these equations. I'm going to trust you to solve them. So we'll get some practice on setting up the equations. So let's do another problem here. Uh, Judy can pilot her powerboat. Uh, five miles into a seven mile per hour wind and the same amount of time she can cover 12 miles with a seven mile per hour tailwind. What's the speed of Judy's boat without the wind? Kind of the same problem. So we have um, into the wind and then with the tailwind. And I've got distance, rate, and time. So the distance into the wind is uh, five miles. Into the wind is a seven mile per hour headwind. So her the, the rate of her boat, I'll use R for the rate of her boat because that S was ugly. It would be R minus seven. Uh, the tailwind is 12 miles, with seven mile per hour tailwind. The tailwind will spin her, speed her up. So R plus 12. 
And now um, it says the same amount of time. So this time equals that time. All right, well, I know that since distance equals rate times time, time equals distance divided by rate. So this time will be five divided by r minus seven. This, this time will be 12 uh, divided by r plus 12. And since those times are equal to each other, I can set up my equation like this and solve it. Okay. Uh, let's take another one of these. So Jasmine trained for three hours on Sunday. She ran eight miles and then biked 24 miles. Okay, so let's see. She ran and she biked. We've got rate. We've got time. Um, her biking speed is four miles per hour faster than her running speed. What is her running speed? Okay. So she trained for three hours. Her total time was three hours. She ran eight miles. She biked 24 miles. Let's see. Her biking speed is four miles per hour faster than her runner speed. I'm going to come back to that because I'm, I've got some time thing going on here. Let me think about this. Um, she, if she trained for three hours on Sunday, her running time plus her biking time must be three hours. So I'm going to say... Um, r for her running time if she ran for three uh for r hours but three hours total her biking times would be three minus r now notice i'm doing this because i i have some rates compared here i'm gonna i want to write this in terms of this and i i used r for running maybe i'll use n because then it won't look like rate but you can use whatever you want all right if distance equals rate times time uh, rate equals distance divided by time. So distance divided by time. So her rate for running should be 8 divided by n. And her distance for biking should be 24 divided by 3 minus n. Now, notice they're not equal to each other, these, these rates. Um, her biking speed is four miles per hour faster than her running speed. So this is faster than that. So if I write an equation for this, it'd be 24 over three minus n. Her biking speed is four miles per hour faster than her running speed. And notice that's a three minus n. So when I go to multiply this out, my common denominator is n times three minus n, multiply it out and solve it grab this Kayla problem and take a look at it. Uh, Kayla rode her bike 75 miles home from college one weekend and then rode the bus back to college. Okay, so it's 75 miles one way. Um, it took her two hours less to ride back to college on the bus than it took her to ride home on her bike. And the average speed of the bus was 10 miles per hour faster than Kayla's biking speed. Find Kayla's biking speed. Okay, so we've got uh, home. How about, well, let's call biking and bus. So we've got some stuff about riding her bike and riding the bus. The distances are the same. They're both 75. So that's, that's convenient. Uh, it took her two hours less to ride back to college on the bus than it took her to ride home on her bike. Okay, so let's just call her time uh, two hours less to ride back on the bus than it took to ride on the bike. So if it took her T hours to bike home, it took her T minus two hours, two hours less, to um, to take the bus back. Okay, so let's think about the rate in terms of the distance and the time. Uh, di rate is distance over time. So the rate for the bike would be 75 over T. Uh, for the bus, it would be 75 over T minus two. And now notice those rates though aren't equal to each other. Uh, the average speed of the bus was 10 miles per hour faster than her biking speed. The speed of the bus, the rate of the bus, was 10 miles per hour faster than the rate of her biking. You got a common denominator of t minus two times t, multiply everything by that, solve it on out. A work problem, let's do a work problem. 
Uh, distance equals rate times time. We've got that dirt. We also know that work equals rate times time. So one gardener can mow a golf course in four hours, while another gardener can mow the same golf course in six hours. How long would it take if the two gardeners work together to mow the golf course? All right. So I'll say first and second. And I've got the amount of work they can do, the rate, and the time. Now here's what is interesting to me. Um, the work is is one, right? Like we're doing everything in terms of how how long it takes you to, to get one job done. So if I think about the rate here, one gardener can mow a golf course in four hours. So if it takes them four hours to do one job, their rate is basically one fourth. They get one fourth of it done in an hour because it takes them four hours to complete it. The other guy gets it done in six hours. So his rate would be one over six. How long would it take the gardeners if they work together to mow the golf course? Okay, so if they're gonna work together, they have they work for the same amount of time. So these are both T's, yeah? Okay, so if the job was one, now I can talk about how much of the job they get done in T amount of time. So work equals rate times time. Rate times time, this would be T over four. This would be T over six. So if they work together, the amount of work that the first person gets done plus the amount of work that the second person gets done, that's them working together equals one. There you go, you've got a least common denominator of 12, or you could multiply by 24 as well and get there from there. Uh, one more. Problem like this, two hoses can fill a swimming pool in 10 hours. It takes one hose 26 hours to fill it. How long will it take the other hose working alone to fill it? Interesting. So we've got hose one, hose two, work rate and time. Um, two hoses can fill it in 10 hours. So the time is 10 hours. That's how long they're working. It would take one hose 26 hours to fill the pool by itself. So its rate is 1 26th. We don't know the other hose's rate. That's what we're trying to find. So I'm going to call it 1 over t. So if I think about the amount of work that's going on here, work equals rate times time. Um, 10 times 1 26th, that's 10 26th, which is what? 5 thirteenths. So in 10 hours, the hose 1 gets 5 thirteenths of it full. In 10 hours, we don't know the rate to this one, but it gets 10 over t of it done. Working together, they get the whole thing done. So 5 thirteenths, that's the amount of work the ho first hose gets done in 10 hours, plus 10 over t, that's the amount of work the second hose gets done in 10 hours, equals 1. It's filling up one pool. Looks like your common denominator is 13t, your least common denominator. Multiply everything by 13t, and you are there. All right, dig into these problems. They take some work, so ask plenty of questions. Again, we're looking at the um, elementary algebra book for this section.